Hey, let us talk about mythology again. When it comes to demonology and mythology, there's one female figure who seems to pop up across countless cultures and religions, and even in today's popular culture. Her name? Lilith. When an ancient text or modern movies, Lilith's story is one of rebellion, seduction, and terror. So, what's the deal with Lilith? Let's dive in. But, of course, as always, please like this video and subscribe if not done so already. With that being said, let's get right into it. You might have heard of Lilith if you've ever come across the term Succubus as one of the earliest examples of this type of demon. Lilith is often described as a demon of the night, who is not only sexual and seductive, but also dangerous. Oh, and did I mention she is said to steal babies in the dead of the night? Yeah, that sounds terrifying. And the idea of Lilith being a child-stealing demon goes all the way back to ancient Mesopotamian religion. There, she was known as Lamashtu, the daughter of the sky god Anu. To some, she was an evil goddess. To others, a demon or monster who preyed on women during childbirth, stealing their little ones and feeding on their blood and marrow. She didn't stop with kids though. Lamashtu would also go after men, eating their flesh and drinking their blood. That's stuff for nightmares right there. The story takes another form in the biblical tradition. Many know her as Adam's first wife, before Eve came into the picture. According to Genesis 1, God created both man and woman at the same time, in his image. But Genesis 2 Tales a different story. This time, woman, which would be Eve, is created from Adam's rib after man was made. In these two creation accounts, let scholars to wonder if there was another woman before Eve. Enter Lilith. In the Talmud, Lilith appears four times. Not as Adam's wife though, but as a demon. The Talmud's describes her as having wings and the face of a woman. She is also said to collect the semen of men while they sleep, to create more demon offspring, giving rise to her role as one of the earlier Sokobi. The story of how Lilith became a demon develops even more in the Middle Ages. According to medieval texts like the Alphabet of Ben Sira, Lilith fled the Garden of Eden because she refused to be submissive to Adam. She didn't want to take the bottom position during... Well... Seeing it as a sign of subservience, fed up with being bossed around. Lilith left Eden, pronouncing God's real name as she went, which turned her into a winged demon. The story continues with three angels being sent to bring her back. But of course she had no intention of returning. And as punishment for her disobedience, the angels killed hundreds of her demon children every day. Lilith, however, bold to take revenge on other people's children instead, causing sickness and death to little ones especially those not protected by the names of the free angels written on amulets. Her story shares some similarities with Mesopotamian figures like Lamashtu, and though we don't have extensive surviving materials about her from the Akkadian Empire, it's easy to see how these ancient myths may have at least influenced Lilith's story. By the Middle Ages, Lilith's popularity was soaring. Her image varied from a beautiful woman to a terrifying demoness. Some even believe she was the snake who tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, acting out of revenge for being replaced. 
in the land of folklore. Lilith became the queen of demons and was paired with Asmodeus, the demon king, well, the third demon king. Together, the day supposedly had thousands of demon children and traveled from place to place, spreading chaos and destruction. Lilith's connections don't end with her Asmodeus, though. Some traditions even link her to Samael, an angel of death and destruction. In some versions of the story, Samael created Lilith as his demonic wife, further strengthening her rebellious image. It's a fascinating twist, turning her into a figure of chaos, not by God's will, but by that of another powerful being. Lilith has been compared to creatures from other mythologies, including Lamia from Greek lore. Lamia's story mirrors Lilith in several ways, with both women becoming monsters after losing their children and seeking revenge. Lamia, like Lilith, became a creature that preyed on others, feeding on blood and flesh. Despite the confusion. In overlapping stories, Lilith has cemented her place in popular culture. She shows up in books, movies, TV shows, and video games. By the way, did you know the White Witch from the Chronicles of Narnia is supposed to be a descendant of Lilith? Or did she appear in True Blood, Thirty Days of Night, and of course, even Supernatural, as the Mother of Demons? Her story continues to fascinate and inspire creators, whether as a seductive succubus, a rebellious figure, or a vengeful demon queen. Lilith's influence stretches far and wide. At the end of the day, Lilith's story speaks to universal themes of rebellion, freedom, and the consequences of defying authority. It might be why we still see her. Referenced in so many different ways today, whether she's viewed as a fallen woman, a demonic temptress, or an avenging spirit, Lilith remains a captivating figure in both ancient mythology and modern pop culture. So, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts on Lilith and whether you have spotted her in unexpected places. Thanks for watching.